see you. I see you. Wherever you are, I see you. I see what you're doing right now. Do you see me? No, you don't see me. You cannot see me, but I am here. And I watch everything you do. So, we are back in our little white room in our podcast, in our theater podcast. And uh, today today will be a special episode with uh, old friends that we had last time also in uh, episode 13, I think it was. And I uh, say hello first to Mariah, of course, my, my better half, my soulmate of the, of the podcast uh, world. And I say hello to Christopher, Christopher Shore. Hello, Simon. And hello, Mariah. And uh, JP Jordan. Hi, everybody. Hi. Where are you now? We're in, uh, I'm in my house in beautiful Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah. We're the... Also in Bethlehem, across town from JP, in my studio. And Mariah is there in Malta, you said. I am, yes. In the beautiful little rock in the middle of the Mediterranean that actually is so small that some people become very claustrophobic and almost seasick. And I invited you all back here because I had the funny idea to make an episode and talk a little bit about yeah, the, the USA situation, to talk a little bit about where you are as a theater. We talked last time about your community work and now I'm interested even more in, 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 in what is your surrounding like. Also in the question of the upcoming election on uh, November 3rd, because uh, as we spoke before, you are uh, in uh, the Lehigh Valley and you are a kind of a swing state or a swing county. And so uh, you are a decisive region somehow for the for this election. And I wonder, I wonder a little bit how is the population of the valley like and what is going on there and how do you see the, the movement at the moment? And then we are going to speak about some uh, of the candidates because there is uh, a new development, but we will come to that later, no? I th sure. Yeah, that sounds good. You're right. Pennsylvania is uh, kind of right in the middle of things. Not in the middle of the country, of course, we're on the east side of the country, but um, we are definitely in the middle of things politically. Um, typically, there are a handful of states that are... Uh, up for grabs. They could go either way, right? The swing states. And a lot of states are pretty well entrenched in their political views. They're consistently, you know, vote Republican or vote Democrat. And Pennsylvania is one of those that that can go either way. And uh, it was a very important state in Trump's victory in 2016. Um, one of a couple states that really swung the election in his favor. And in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, the system is that the, there are counties in the states and that each county's votes go for you know, uh, a candidate. Um, and in Pennsylvania, there were just a couple of counties that had voted for Obama in both elections and then basically switched teams and voted for Trump in 2016, and uh, Northampton County, uh, where I am right now, where I live, um, is, was, is one of those two counties that, that did that. Um, so we're definitely feeling the pressure. This election, uh, there's a lot of attention on us. We were in the, I think, the front page of the New York Times just two days ago. Mm. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of eyes are on Bethlehem and on the Lehigh Valley in general. Bethlehem oh. actually um, is in two counties. Two counties, the, the city is split by a, by a river and some other things, and um, uh, so the city is divided into two different counties. Huh. How is the just pretty, to get an the, idea. No, JP. I said we're the prettiest girl at the dance right now. Everybody wants to dance with us. <laughs> 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 Don Donald Trump. He came to just yesterday. Came to uh, I guess five miles from our house here to hold okay. a rally. Wow. Yeah. So 
It's it's very politically active at this. So just to get an idea, how how big, how many uh, people uh, are living in these counties? These so two. So we live in, yeah, we live in what's called the Lehigh Valley, and so the Lehigh Valley is a number. It's three big, three medium sized cities, and then a bunch of little smaller boroughs and villages all around. And there's about a million people there. Um, but we lie in New York City and Philadelphia, we lie halfway in between, basically. Mm. And, and Bethlehem, the other... Bethlehem is the, is the middle and the smallest of those three cities in the Lehigh Valley. So how is it, po how, how is it possible that people voted for Obama in, in the 28, uh, 2008 and then uh, changed to Trump? I know, I know people that very much did that, uh, friends of ours, that they were big Obama supporters and then they just didn't get what they wanted out of it. And then, you know, disenfranchised, mm -hmm. found themselves voting for Trump. Was it, uh, it yeah, yeah, Christopher? It, my, my, my assessment is a, is a little bit different. I, I think that it was less that they were unhappy with what Obama did and more so they were unhappy with the with the alternative to Trump. I think that I think that Obama against Trump people would have still gone Obama. Mm. Mm. But uh Trump against Clinton they went Trump. Um and I think that 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 um I think that she ended up not being a strong candidate and I think that um there's a I think there's always a a strong impulse to want something from outside of the system. Mm. And um, Trump provided that in 2016, and he's you know seems to still be selling himself in that way now as the outsider. <laughs> weird, huh? Pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. And, and, <laughs> and Sanders, was he popular in your region? Bernie Sanders in, in 2016? Do you know what the numbers were like in the, in the in Northampton County, JP? I'm not sure what they were. I don't, man. I'm Lehigh County. I don't pay attention to what you guys do down the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like there was some good energy um, around Sanders. Um, hmm. I was certainly part of that <laughs> energy. <laughs> I was excited about that. Um, uh, yeah. And is there any of that kind of vibe now? Is there any excitement or is what is the vibe at the I would suggest there is no vibe like the Sanders vibe going on now. I think that people actually like Bernie Sanders. If you were supporting him, it's because you believed he was a stand up human being with good ideas that you could rally around. And in my opinion, uh I think what 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 we're seeing with Biden is everybody's just it's it's your only anti-Trump vote that's worth anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think people would rather be voting for somebody else that they believed in more, but J Joe's the superhero we have right now. And so, you know, mm -hmm. we're all pulling for him to, you yeah. know, to, to pull it across the finish line. But I think ultimately it's, it's like, eh, all right, if this is what we got, we're going to go with it instead of yeah. what, what you saw with Sanders, which was like rap enthusiasm. And it's mm. like, yeah, Bernie, look at these ideas. This is great. Well, we're, all boats will rise, you know, and, you know, people felt good about it. But that's, no, it's it's the panic of Joe not getting in <laughs> is is more so the vibe rather than, you know, like, you know, here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. what, what I feel is not excitement on the streets, but anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. I think that there is a great deal of anxiety not just about which way the election will go, but about how the country is going to handle the moment. Um, I know I, I personally am very concerned about um, the chaos that I f fear will um, ensue in the days mm. following the election. Yeah. You believe it will be a very difficult uh, process. It will be not clear in the end, in the 3rd of November, in the evening, and then it will... I, you look I, at all the what I'm concerned numbers, about... Yeah, I was just going to say, if you look at the poll numbers, you know, they had it wrong before, but they claim they got what, what was wrong before right now. Hmm. 
And if that's the case, then Trump doesn't have a, a snowball's chance of winning this thing, which is awesome. You know what I mean? But who knows what's going to happen. But to the idea of like what's going to happen, I think it's going to be a decisive victory on the day of. I think we're going to, I that's what I believe just from the, the reports. But I don't know. I don't, part of me, I was telling Christopher the other day, I felt really, I felt really kind of the way I woke up the one day, I'm like, if Trump does not win, this is going to be absolute chaos. And if Trump does of, not win, if he does not win, uh -huh. it will be mm -hmm. absolute chaos. I'm not afraid of the Democrats losing. I'm afraid of Trump losing, mm. even though I didn't vote for him. <laughs> you know, that yeah. it's it just the, the people that uh, vote for Trump are uh, not all of them. There's, there's very good people that vote for Trump in our country. Uh, but there are some some people that are it just as anything people become radicalized both on the left and the right and neither of it's a yeah. a, a good position to be in mm. and so I, but i'm more concerned about a radicalized right than i am about a radicalized left mm -hmm. yeah my concerns are not about the uh the election itself and like how how it goes and the the counting of votes although i imagine there will be plenty of problems around that. My concern is that um, when people get a taste of things going their way and then you take that away from them, hmm. that there's a kind of desperation that will come. And I, I'm concerned that that desperation will cause um, you know, some real chaos and unfortunately, I fear violence. Also in your region, do you feel a, 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 there was this documentary on PBS Frontline, The Great Divide? Uh, do you see this division of the of the of the people in in your region also? Is there is there this this gap between like yeah Democrats and Republicans or left or right or whatever you, you would call it like? It might be a good, it might be a good thing right now that COVID has the bars shut down. <laughs> I can imagine that there would be many fist fights at the moment <laughs> across Pennsylvania, and so uh, we're—it's—it's it's seriously your neighbor. Like you'll walk down any given street in town here, mm. and one house has a Biden sign up, and the next one has a Trump sign up. It's that mm. close, you know. You know what I mean? Mm. The way these people are dealing with one another, and so I don't know. But Pennsylvania is unique in its own kind of Quaker sensibilities. I don't know that we're, we've. I don't. You know, I don't know. It's a an interesting thing where, where there's a, a re, I think, if, in my opinion, that the Pennsylvanians are reserved in their own way. But if they get hot, they get really hot. Mm. Mm. But it might be more fisticuffs than hand grenades, maybe. Or I don't know. There's a lot of guns in Pennsylvania. Like uh, yeah. where we, I, I grew up about an hour north of here, and it's just it's in the culture that it's it's um. It's such a beautiful state. It's one of my favorite states. I think it's one of the most beautiful. And hunting is a big thing in all the rural communities around uh -huh. here. And so we all grew up, and my father was a police officer, and so I grew up, you know, with guns in my house and all my friends' buddies, their dads, they all right. had guns. And so it was just something like you were just used to. But I think that most most level-headed people would, would, would rather not have fisticuffs or guns. <laughs> And you know what I mean? Would rather just, you know, all right. They won't walk away, but I think they're, I think in my opinion, Christopher, I don't know, you came from a, a lot of other places, so maybe you have a different perspective on it, but I think Pennsylvania was, would prefer not to fight. Uh, like that would be the main thing is like not antagonize the other person if you don't have to, hmm. because you know that everybody might have a gun. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah. We have um, there's a, a a second divide, you know. JP mentioned it's neighbor to neighbor. You know, you have a Biden sign, a Trump sign, but we also have um, we support the police signs, mm -hmm. which oh. seem to be a kind of stand-in on the mo for the most part for Trump signs in neighborhoods where. Um, Maybe people don't, maybe there are a lot of Biden signs and they don't want to put Trump signs in their yard. We're seeing a lot right. of we support the Bethlehem police signs. And 
this is a, a confusing and very problematic situation where, you know, the supporting the police becomes this coded, um, coded suggestion that there's a divide between the police and Black Lives Matter. Mm. And that that's also a political divide, Republican, Democrat. And so to support the police is to support Trump, which suggests yeah. that everybody else doesn't support the police, which is certainly not exactly. true. But it, it, it creates this additional layer of um, kind of uh, not just not just anxiety and divide, but also this kind of um, uncertainty and fear. And then you got, you know, pickup trucks with flags, Trump flags flying in the, you know, in the beds of the trucks, which is a a bit visually coded um, to trucks with Confederate flags flying, Mm -hmm. which is a very intimidating image uh for minorities um Mm. so there are a lot of there are a lot of problematic um kind of images and uh uh, kind of i would would say the semiotics of the of the situation is problem problematic Mm. definitely and a lot of claiming of territory which is defining then the landscape that can be can be acted in it's uh, yeah and how do you as a as the theater as touchstone theater deal with this situation with this division and with the, also of course with the with the election coming up what uh, what is your role what are you what are you doing i think touchstone's role is the same as touchstone's role ever always is and that's the, the uh, we were talking about this earlier today we just uh got finished with an eight week festival Hmm. Where we, whereas other theaters are on, you know, are at a standstill and not doing anything. Touchstone did, we, we had one show a week of different content for the last eight weeks. And our voice, uh, our, the, the mission of that thing at its basic level, as we said, is to bring community together. And it's also to offer voice to, to those that might not have it, you know, at any given point in time. And so to that end, that continues. And so anything we're saying, I think that we went when we went into this thing was not, hey, like we're not going after Trump. We're not promoting Joe Biden. What we're going to say is that like love and, you know, science and Mm -hmm. intelligence and other and truth is a good thing. Mm. You know what I mean? And that we have a lot to learn from a lot of different people and like approach it with a certain level of humility. But, you know, it's it's crazy that the minute you start talking about when you say, oh, yeah, we're going to be, a, it's a festival about love and hope. Somehow, like, that's anti a candidate. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that candidate's whole that's identity strange. is the opposite thing. So it, it wasn't sent out as an, as an act of defiance against like the Trump, Trump regime, mm-hmm. but like... It, it just happens to be that when you talk about things like equal rights, mm. you know, unfortunately. Well, I think it's, it's super linked to what Christopher was saying about claiming the police. It's, it's almost, you know, it's, it, it so seems to be so polarized that whatever you uh, um, put out there will be falling into one of the geographies that is, uh, that is being created. Almost yeah, like we to... were very, uh, we were very careful on the topic of the police with some of the programming we did. Even back into July, we had a, a piece called. There was a music video that was created for the company, and it was called Lehigh Valley Be Free. And we specifically did not, uh, we did we knew it was problematic at that point in time to use mm. the police, and so we left out kind of all first responders besides medical people at that moment in time. And then even when we went into in September, we had an event that was going to happen on 9-11 and we moved it to 9-12. And I was kind of like, I wish we could have like figured out how to do something better. But it, the police became so problematic of, of a thing, it was best just to avoid 
avoid the thing because it, it, uh, constantly it's like let's bring them to the table and let's have a conversation mm. but then you hear from your partners that if you bring the police to the table you're you're taking away your you know what i mean you're gonna make your other partners mad at you because they're the black Lives matter people mm. and it's like let me clarify also um something that might not is probably not clear to people outside of the states the, our community is not a hotbed for racial conflict. Mm. Mm. You know, we are not having co- confrontations between police and protesters or uh, whites and blacks. We're not one of those places, mm-hmm. although there are those places certainly in the country where that's happening. Um, so it's 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 not responding to things that are happening here. It's just sort of the general position and what these things have come to have come to mean. Mm-hmm, um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a psychogeography actually that's being created rather than a yes. real. real um, yeah, it's very very interesting. I mean, it reminds me a bit of in Holland. There's a lot of uh, of racism, especially in the villages where there is no foreigner to be found. And that's such an extraordinary uh, um, mechanism where, you know, exact, actually the, the absence of something can then occupy an area in the, in the psyche that, is, that is, uh, makes it become this sign of something rather than an actual situation. Mm. I was uh, uh, curious when when you say you're bringing communities together that you feel that as your mission and in these trouble troubles uh, t- troubled times and um who are these communities are they like the neighborhoods that are surrounding um the theater are they further spread out are they specific Sure so over the uh what we were able to do over at Touchstone uh, which is on the south side of Bethlehem. And we have, uh, it's where our home theater is. And we own this kind mm. of, the, these buildings on the corner of a block. There's like three buildings and there's a large parking lot behind. And so when the COVID hit, we were like, okay, well, our theater is so intimate, 75 seats and people will be right on top of each other. So we started to think, you know, and I think when the last time we spoke with you guys, it was back in June. Mm-hmm. And so it was right around these ideas, right at that moment in time, we were probably immediately like starting this planning and being like, well, what are we going to do? And so what we did is like, we were able to turn the parking lot into a 150 seat theater venue yeah. and use, I we remember. have like two, two story back porches and we were able to do it. And, and we, that the whole festival was based off this idea that we can use this as our new performing arts space. Uh, and, and we did, and it went on. And so the communities came in, some of them based on the events that were being held. We started off with a Latinx block party, mm-hmm. and that thing sold out. And not only did it sell out, we had people leaving and then more people coming in. So it was like almost like a restaurant. The turnover that night, it was like multiple different audience members coming and going. Um, what what was it? Can you that, repeat? A Latin... Uh, Lat- Latinx... So instead of Latino, they in America are you now using the term Latinx as an, a non gender specific uh, version of Latino. So it was a it was a, a block party uh, for the Latinx community. Um, we uh, the Touchstone Theater itself is in a very Latinx neighborhood. Uh, mm. A lot of Puerto Ricans. Um, Dominicans, Mexicans, um, and so we had uh, uh, mainly a band and food and uh, mm. different uh, representatives from different local organizations would get up and speak about services they're offering the community, and we also had a, a get out the vote drive uh, with an organization there specifically focused on uh, Latino voters. Um, and so, you know, we had, uh, multilingual staff and people registering to people to vote on site, telling them about the process, that sort of thing. 
And then every week it would be a, a specifically we'd offer, you know, we're again, this idea of offering voice. And so we had two events that were, were geared directly toward the, the local black community. Another event that was uh, geared to LGBTQ youth. Um, and so we did, as I was saying, though, the one on September 12th was for the medical workers for them to come out and tell their stories. And so our audience gets to show up and hear these stories of different segments of the community. And then two of them, two of these events were kind of more just arts based. And I, for one of them, I took some students and we looked at uh, uh, folklore and legends from around the world. And we created an evening of shadow puppetry, uh, hmm. re retelling, um, yeah, fairy tales, basically. And then the following week uh, was Christopher, where he debuted the Dictators for Dummies uh, movie. I was just thinking these fairy tales were they like a political message. <laughs> But again, were, it, again, <laughs> w w it, it, it was w the name of the event was Tales of Hope and Resistance, and so yeah, the, it was it was loaded into the name from the get go. Especially the hope, probably more than the resistance, is the problem there, right? <laughs> yeah. And did you in this in this? Uh, uh, Events where where the the community workers or people that that are uh, uh, were introducing their activities. Did you also add performative or theatrical elements around this or interwoven with this? How did you organize it? In multiple different ways. So, for example, in the Latinx event, it was primarily music, and then when the when the music would stop, there were simply speeches from different community mm. groups and then more music um uh similarly for something like uh the uh the shadow puppetry piece that jp was talking about that was you know here's the art and now someone is speaking about something mm -hmm. uh whereas the piece about um uh medical workers was actually their stories being told by themselves in a in a slightly crafted mm. way to help with the with the sort of storytelling um but there weren't uh other visual um elements of that it was simply right. the stories being told but it wasn't like a speech about something it was the it w was the telling of a story so there was a narrative there and what was the craft elements in there you had worked with them or they had been slight like helped to shape the story or yeah so i i don't know the exact specifics on that but one of our one of our resident ensemble members mary wright it we she's our basically our resident storytelling expert and so she went and worked with uh, her and another ensemble member emma uh They worked with this. They we they identified members of the community that were interested in doing it. They went and mm. then they did a, they did a process. I'm sure which involved, hey, let's hear your story, and then let's help you edit your story, and then let's let's help you build your confidence to be on stage mm. and deliver the story. Oh, that's amazing. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Typically, our process would for our uh, for a lot of our work would involve that as a step but then we that wouldn't be a performance we'd then move through that step and then turn those stories that we had gathered into a performance that we would create perhaps with community involvement um yeah. so this was you know taking that step of what is normally just a moment in the process and making it it the actual performance mm -hmm. yeah 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 that is an I find I'm finding in these times that maybe this is something that you recognize now that things are being stretched out for instance your festival over eight weeks and and here in Holland you know because we can have so little audience a show is done maybe five times in in one day so that these little uh, groups of so things are stretched and then also space uh, starts to grow in between those things for uh for something to breathe differently and uh, and also this thing that somehow the performance seems to matter a little less 
and as a shifting to looking at uh, things that are inside the process or that are more wrapped in the practice to start to be shared. So this obsession with the stage, I feel it is really loosening for many of the theatre people that I know that, and it it might be actually quite an interesting uh, development for us. I would I would say that a hundred percent, even for myself. You know what I mean? I think there's been you know there's so many times we go to conferences or something, and it's like, well, what are you doing? Are you doing art or are you doing social justice work? Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like you know, and, and one of those things, and those lines start to get. I don't know if they get blurred, but maybe it's that they get more defined. And it's like, yeah, sometimes I am doing social justice work and not and not just <laughs> with with the expertise I have from being a, a theater artist and helping to you know that we can do this and that we can bring yeah. stories to life in this way, and that's an that's as acceptable as us creating the next most awesome operatic spectacle that ever happened you know exactly exactly it's like something is let loose Hmm. we're seeing that in our students as well you know we have a a master's program an mfa in performance creation Mm -hmm. it's a collaboration between touchstone theater and moravian college and our students some of them are coming really because they have this mission you know, this social justice idea, or maybe it's not social justice, maybe it's some, some something else, but it's totally mission-driven. Mm. Whereas other students are more interested in uh, maybe creating a new kind of performance, you know, that mm-hmm. has more to do with yeah. um, different elements and techniques. Um, so we're seeing that as well with the students. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really interesting and, and kind of hopeful um, thing that is happening in all this trouble that we are that we are going through. That uh, this product uh, oriented, like the the result, this thing of the performance, it is it is also might seem, and it, and I, again, I think the the COVID crisis or the Corona crisis has more revealed this tendency than that it has actually created it. Uh, but it have revealed it very strong that um, that there is more to our practice than uh, than the artistic result on its own. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's why a, a place like Touchstone and the work we're engaged in there is able to, you know, thrive right now while mm-hmm. other while other places yeah. are like just done, paralyzed. You know, it's like, yeah, just paralyzed, and it's like, well, what are you guys gonna do now that you can't do do exactly? What you, it's like, cool, we're just gonna do this instead, and like this will work, and like awesome, we'll continue to serve our mission, and we can you know continue to create. So I um, I would like to ask you about the I I said before the uh, I heard about some new developments in the uh, in the election process of re- regarding the 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 candidates. So I know, of course, uh, there is only uh, two candidates, one candidate that will win, and of course two that are really uh, realistic, but uh, um, to be voted uh, on, which is of course Biden and Trump. But there is also some, let's say, maybe fringe movement, movement on the on the side, and uh, I I heard about that. It, it was coming even to us, to Europe, uh, this campaign. Yeah. Uh, under the hashtag Carlo2020. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it, In a way, it seemed like it came out of nowhere. But, uh, you know, Carlo, I think, had a moment. Some, you know, in the past, he was, you know, this Carlo Supremo, this general, um, was, you know, quite powerful. Uh, but in recent years, you know, we haven't heard anything about him. Sometimes we hear that he's maybe performing... Um, as a lounge singer in Las Vegas. We win only when you play along. Dummy, give us power and what could go wrong. Dummy, um, give it up and and involved in different chari- charitable work, different, um, the, the telethon that he runs every year. Year after year, the Tyrants of Tomorrow Telethon supports the children. 
We have heard their stories, seen the looks on their faces when they're given a chance at a dream. Generalissimo Carlos Supremo, a hero for the children. But really, it seemed like he had no political aspirations. But then suddenly it's like, oh, Donald Trump and Carlo are suddenly like hanging out. That's interesting and surprising. But, you know, Trump has a seems to have a thing for dictators and Carlo had had been a dictator. So maybe that's not maybe it makes sense in that way. He likes he likes to hang out with the you know the strong man kind of guys. Yes. Now we're gonna be big time. Now we're gonna prove I'm wrong. Now we'll make our countries great once again. And you better come along. But, you know, we see them hanging out. There are pictures of them, like, playing golf together and that kind of thing. And they're playing our song. They seem to get closer and closer. Then we read that Carlo is becoming some kind of advisor. Mm -hmm. We'll have them lie and say we were not crooks. And then I don't know if it, it didn't it wasn't for very long. I don't know if you guys were getting this news where you are, but Donald Trump actually switched running mates. You know, he he dumped Mike Pence. We were the best damn dictators. Of and he chose this Carlo Supremo as his running mate. And if someday they doubt us, who's gonna be Trump? Trump and Carlo and then you know they have a some kind of falling out and there's a fight and you know these say, oh they were best friends and now they don't want to talk to each other yeah find them even from our graves will make them and then suddenly Carlo's running on his own and we yeah. start to see this Carlo 2020 yeah. Is this cropping up? Yeah. The president, a public figure, a man of action. But the right man is hard to find, and the world is filled with knockoffs and fakes. Many politicians are just puppets, and most of I don't know. What, it doesn't seem like he's a realistic possibility, but he's he's out there. He's he's promoting himself. You need someone who's his own man, someone who doesn't rely so heavily on the support of his base he'll topple without it. You need someone who can stand on his own two legs. You can dress any dummy up to look like a president. But who is the right man for the job? A figure ready for action. Carlo Supremo. Nobody's puppet. But, and Carlo, now he, he's, running, he's running alone? Does he have his, how, how does he run his campaign? Is he alone on his own? Or do, does he have some, I don't know, a running mate even? Does he have a, a, some... Uh, a team or I mean not not for this political campaign no it's just it's just Carlo 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 yeah that's mm. all we ever hear <laughs> where was Carlo a dictator you mentioned he was a dictator at some point in the past yeah yeah I mean but it's all very shady you know it's like it's what? shady yeah. yeah it's like what Tell us more, and then you can't find it. And you look up the newspapers, and oh, oh, they were shredded in some. Oh, the library burned down. You know, mm. you can never find any information that you're looking for. Yeah, I think we. I think they know though that it was in the neighborhood over there around Malta, right? <laughs> the neighborhood around well, there, somewhere in the singing, neighborhood. I heard him sing a song about Monaco. Really. But so I, I, I'm very glad because you actually, you guys, you also have some kind of connection to him. Um, uh, how did you meet him? And uh, yeah. Well, I... Ah, it's a beautiful night here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It started off, I think, as a problem. Mm. Uh, you know, JP and I write together and we had written a, a musical called The Pan Show. And uh, there were a couple of different episodes of the Pan Show. We wrote it together. I directed it. JP played the God Pan um, in the in the in the series. And at some point, Carlo started singing songs 
from the pan show. And it, frankly, it was a copyright violation. Mm. So there was a problem there. We were trying to get him to cease and desist. Um, and it became a little bit of a back and forth um, confrontation between JP and me and Carlo. Um, but that's, I mean, that's how we, that's how we sort of encountered him in a, in a personal way, as opposed to just knowing about him as a candidate. Well, I think you have to do some soul searching at that moment in time. And you ask yourself, you know, cause at first you're like, do we really want to, there's no way a dictator is going to use our music to promote totalitarianism. Yeah. Then you're like, you know, is there a price on it? You know, I'm like, well, <laughs> what is it? You know, and it's a lot of soul searching. Yeah, but you know, now you now you're speaking about him, and uh, I think uh, some. You, uh, I think the best is also to have to hear all the voices, uh, because uh, of course, for us, it's very interesting to hear somebody who's clearly not of the establishment. Like the Trump is claiming to be not establishment. Of course, he, he's president now, so he's uh, establishment. More establishment. There is not more establishment. So, so I, I really would like to uh, to to hear from uh, Carlo himself somehow. Uh, JP, do, what's you, going do you have on. the phone number at the at the tel the telephone phone number? That, that's did. why I invited you because because you said that that you could make some kind of connection and then that we could speak to him maybe. Sure. Yeah, we Can might we learn something. Up? Yeah, yeah, why not? Give him a buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Party line. Yeah. Party line. You you have him on, on the short dial, <laughs> dial yeah. button. I tell it's it's actually a long dial. Hold on. Hello. Hello? Hey Carlo. Hello. Hello? Hello? Hello, Carlo. Carlo. Yeah. Carlo, this is JP from Touchstone. Uh, ah, Touchstone Theater. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah. Good. Good. You know. Uh. Yeah. Just. It, we, I'm on a. I'm on a podcast here and with Christopher, and we and the the host thought that maybe you would like to talk a little bit about your candidacy. Oh, sure, sure, any time. Yeah, I'd love to meet hello. you guys, talk yeah. about it. Yeah, hello, Carlo. Hi, I'm Simon. I'm, I'm Simon from Germany. Ah, nice to meet you. Hello, Simon. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi, Carlo. Yeah, I'm beautiful. Mariah. I'm in Malta. You know Malta. Ah, Malta. Oh, it's been so long. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Yeah, nice. Malta, Germany. Ooh, touched on theater. Oh, it's a real party now. So we wanted to, to, we really wanted to have you on the show. This is called The, the White Room. It's actually a, a podcast on theater. But um, as we are facing now the elections uh, in, in the USA and we, we, we heard about that you are going to run and also that you are, si. that you're a dictator. So I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's not really our style, but uh, anyway, it's kind of entertaining. It, no, it, it has <laughs> been your style. It has been your style. I mean, come on, it has been your style. Okay, if you mean that art is can also be, uh, there are dictatorial directors that can be, but but not generally, it's not. No, I mean for your place, for your place, you had the dictators all the time. I mean, the big guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. For my place. No, you don't like to talk no, about No, 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 not really. <laughs> okay, past is past. Yes. Spygons, spygons! Good, good. Yeah. Good. He's good. Good people, though. So actually, we wanted to ask you some some questions to 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 get to know each other, to get to know your sure. program, your ideas. So actually, I will just start. Well, you know me. You know me. Uh, I'm an open book. It's an open book. So, uh, where do you actually come from? Ah, I come from Italy. And how how did you become a politician? Oh well, you know. I, I'd say difficult childhood, you know. It's uh, eh, not a lot of, not a lot in the house, not a lot of family. It's uh, difficult, you know, for the kids uh, coming up like that, you know. And you, you get to learn 
We got to learn to, to really be tough, you know, be in charge. And um, one thing leads to another, you know, you get a, a gang of friends together. And, uh, you take over another gang of friends, and now you got two gangs, you know. Uh, pretty soon you get a little town, and you're running the town. And then uh, uh, one thing leads to another, and, and then you see an opportunity. And you say, ah, ah, I take it. I take that. I take it. I take it. And that's what I did. I take, I took it. I took it. And the that's how you do it. You take it. And the people were happy? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Pa, Papa Carlo, they love him. Sure. That... I'm, I'm good. I, I, you know what? I'm a people person. That's the thing. That's the thing. You get to know me. You love me. I'm a people person. He's Papa Carlo. The more dependent they become, the more they give you the love. It's no have to make sense to be true. A nation is a family, the leader on top. The people are babies, they learn from pop. The nation is a barnyard, the people are sheep. If you tell them what to do, they don't make a peep. But you got to be strong, and the people must be weak. Papa got to be big, Papa got to be tough, Papa got to be strong, so I hope you like it rough. Papa got to draw the line, he got to be gruff. Cry uncle to Papa when you've had enough. So, Papa, Papa Carlo. Papa Carlo, do, do you have like a hero? Did anyone help you? Uh, were you under the protection of, of someone when you were coming up? Uh, a lot of people talk about uh, your similarities. They say, ah, you got a, you, you remind us of someone, uh, some other Italian. There are a lot of comparisons, you know. Oh, you look like a him. Oh, you dress like a him. Uh, but it's not true. He's not true. I'm original, Carlo. He's not a... Uh, 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 I'm not a uh, copy no one. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a me, Carlo. It's, I don't need some some uh, some other guy to be like, oh, you be like me. No, I'm the guy. You be like me. You're the idol. I'm the, I'm the one. Mm. You want to look for someone. I'm right here. You can, uh, you know, you you can follow me. Election day, election day is a coming right up. You know, it's just a week. It's just a week away. So and get your get your mailing the ballots now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carlo, I I heard that you've actually been uh, in office before in some other country. Uh, sure. Can you tell us a bit about that? Your experience. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, experience is so important. All you need is Papa's love. Come on out. Everybody, 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 please be Papa. So I hope you like it around. You know, you can. Some of these guys, they come up, they think they go right to the top, but they, they, they don't, they don't work for it. You know, or they inherit it. You know, someone give it to them. But you know, I think you've got to work your way. You've got to go from the bottom all the way, step, step, step. You arrive. You arrive. You know, it's all about the journey. You will learn so much. And this is the experience, you know. And this is, I bring this. I bring this because a long story of the life and the experience. You meet the people. You crush them. You take what they have. You, now you have more stuff, you know, you get it all. Oh. Henry Lissimo, Carlos Supremo, everybody! <laughs> and then you are the one on the top. And you mm. have the experience of leadership. Mm. And this is, I think, what I bring. Is the, 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 the strong uh, leadership. But you get the boat, best of both worlds because I'm also like a relaxed guy. Mm. You know, I'm not like some distant, uh, oh, I'm a king, uh, you can't talk to me, I'm a too good for you. No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a normal guy, I'm a people person, so it's like that. 
Carla, I would like before we go more deep into your values and your your political yes, your yes. political uh, <clears throat> your political that. Exp that. expertise. That conversation yeah. Sometime when we have more time. No, no, no. We will, will, we, we, we will really get into it. Yeah. Be before we get into it, I I just want to play a little game with you. So uh, this, yeah. You like it is like play it. Yeah. To play the game. Yeah. Play a very simple, Some small, kind of, funny uh, game. Play. G Gameplay. Gameplay. Yes, it's called the A. Oh, it's, sure. it's called the A B test, and it's it's A B test. A B test. It's it's a it's a, it's a, test. yeah it's a test. It's even more more difficult than Trump's test that he took. More more difficult. <laughs> so it's the, very don't, difficult. Don't get me started. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Later. Uh, so uh, uh. Uh, the rules is very very easy. I, uh, there is a uh, option A and option B, and you decide very quickly. You can also say move on if you don't want to answer. But you can move on. you yeah you cannot uh, say more than uh, five times move on. So I I will start. It goes like this. Move on. CNN or Fox. Fox. Classical music or jazz. Jazz. Jazz or hard rock. Jazz. Smith or Marx. Wesson. Uh, sorry, what? Smith. <laughs> Adam Smith or Marx. Karl Marx. I uh, move on. There's number one. Move on. You only have four left. I I will keep count. Beatles or Stones? Beatles or Stones? I think of the Beatles. Okay. Beatles or the Ramones? I think of the Beatles. Oh. And jazz, maybe. <laughs> Keaton or Chaplin? Uh, oh, these two guys, you know, they do so much damage. I say Keaton. Yeah. Keaton. You, you can also choose Keaton. to explain more, to elaborate on your answer if you wish to. Ah, uh -huh. You know, I would say that... Um, Chaplin, he had a lot of good things, uh, but I think he got a lot of wrong. You know, he used to do a good job, and then he did the dictator. Oh. You know, and he's, with this dictator, he tried, but, you know, you look at him and you say, hey, you're just a little funny man, you know, you're just a funny little guy. Mm. You, don't, uh, you don't speak with no authority, mm. you know, and yeah. this is the problem for me. Well, yeah, that is why I say, I say Keaton. Okay. Manhattan or Berlin? Berlin. Vegan or meat every day? Meat every day. <laughs> Netflix or Prime? Prime. SMS or WhatsApp? SMS. SMS, oh. SMS or Telegram? Te oh, have you... The tele you know, I have the whole Telegram. <laughs> You've seen it. You've seen it. My people, my people, they do the real, really nice Telegram. Read or watch? Read or like watch. watch? Read or yeah. watch? Ah, the read, like read the book. Read the book. Or watch the book. <laughs> I like to watch the book. I like to watch the book best. Cat or dog? Dog. Sports or arts? Sports. Amazon or library? Prime. <laughs> Beach or mountains? Ma, you know, mm, this I like. But I think I can go, I think I go to the beaches. Okay. I, do, I do like them both, but I, the, the beaches are so nice. Lying down or stand up? Huh. Stand up. Yoga or back pain? Back pain. <laughs> <laughs> profit, <laughs> profit or people? Pro, uh, profit or people? This interest, it is an interesting yeah. uh, choice there. Profit or people? Uh, I say I'm a people person. I go to people. Very fine people or thugs? Oh, the, th the fine people. Keynes or Friedman? Keynes. I knew that. Train or plane? Yes. Train. Car or bike? Mm, the car. Mm. Private or public? Private. Advertisement or payment? Payment. Electric or gas? Gas. Okay. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Facebook or Instagram? Uh, the Facebook. <laughs> Rocky or Rambo? Prime. <laughs> Rock. Rocky or Rambo? I don't, I don't Rambo. understand the. Rambo. Rocky, the Rambo. boxer. Rambo. Rocky. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Rocky, 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 Rocky. Merkel or Putin? Put, uh, Merkel. Uh, Putin, Putin. <laughs> Putin or Xi Jinping? Putin. Trump or Biden? Uh, you send a, I think it's not so fair for you to, to do it like that. You know, you get a bit of a history. Good, good. Later. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say... Uh, Biden. 
Oh, yes or maybe. Yes. Share or have. I have. I have it. I have it. Inside. Well, no, I, I. But I'm willing to share it. Okay. You know, I have it. I have. You got to have it to share it. And believe me, I have it. Old or new? A new. To do or not to do? To do it. Do it. To be or not to be? To be. On or off? Off. Um, che or Fidel? Che. Che or Chavez? Ah, I like uh, Chavez. <laughs> mm. Trotsky or Lenin? A Trotsky. Trotsky or Stalin? Stalin. Of course. Amazon or Alibaba? Uh, <laughs> the Baba. Oh. Do you, have a, do you have a Chinese connections? But, but I like the Prime. This is, the, <laughs> this is the thing. I like the Prime, but I like the Baba. I, d I tell you what, I like the Baba, just to say it, just to say it, I like the Baba. I like the Baba. It's so nice. It's so nice to, to say, I like the Baba. Mm. Steak or I like pancake? I like the Baba. Ah, uh, pancake, I like it. Oh, really? No steak? Yeah, I like, I like, no, no, I like the pancake. Kant or Hegel? Kant. Hmm. Penguin or kangaroo? Penguin. Funny or not funny? Funny. Red or green? Green. And again, Trump or Biden? You said Biden. Why did you say Biden? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, I like to give the kid a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a Trump. I know him. I know what he's about. I know what he's got to offer. And, uh, you know, I feel like uh, he had the potential for something, but he, he did not rise to the challenge of it. Mm. You know, he did not take full advantage of the opportunities given to him. And so, uh, see, this Biden, you know, you put, a, you put a man like a Biden in there, then uh, you know, someone like a Carlo, he, he come along, he help him. He provides some counsel, maybe give him some good ideas, you know. I did this with Trump. And I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was good. You know, for a, while, for a while it was good. It was, it was really nice, you know. I got to be honest, we, re we connected, it was nice, you know. It was nice to have someone to just relax, you know, just sit down, have a drink. You know, watch the TV together, maybe take a dip in the pool, you know, relax, just relax, relax at times. Mm. And, uh, but things go bad, you know, mm. it's not last forever and you got to move on. So you need to, I'm, I've moved on, you know, and I say, man, oh, Trump, you know what they say? I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what they say. This is what the kids, the kids, they say this. Trump is in the rear view. He's in the rear view. And you know, Carlo is a look ahead. He look at the, to the next guy. And I think it's a Biden. Mm. This, this is where I put the, uh, you know, my money uh, is in the, you know, it's, it's in the military support, honestly. But if it was not, I would put it in Biden. <laughs> yeah, uh, interesting. How? But you are running for the election. So how will you win? How will you win the election? How are you going to win the election? You know, uh, uh, winning is a funny business. You know, in this country, they they like to vote. They like to think, uh, oh, we, uh, I'm a good to the poll. I cast my vote. Uh, look at me. I'm a American citizen, uh, I take a part in the process, you know, it's, a, it's a nice for the people, you know. So, you let them do it. Mm. They like it. You give them the sticker, you know, say, I voted today, maybe um, feel warm inside, it's really nice. You let them have it, and then you take it. This is how I win. Mm. You let the people have what they want, so, and then you take it. So you are going to accept the results of the election, actually. Well, 
I take it. I take. I take it. I take it. The results, and I take it. It is mine. Carlo, now he have it. This is how I win. You got to take it. You see it. You like it. You take it. You know, it's a have or you share. Well, you can't share if you don't have. So you take the results. You say you vote for him. You vote for him, and then I take it. It doesn't matter who you vote for, because now I'm in charge. Mm. You have a Carlo. But then I share, because I'm a nicer guy. And people are happy. What are you going to do in the first hundred days of your presidency? You know, it's a nicer question, I got to say. First you step to the right. Keep your money out of sight. Make sure your knees are bent. Keep the generals content. Now you do a little spin. Bring the military in. Put your hand on your chest. Say the army's best. Now you move your heaps. And you build some sheeps. We call the little combo the military mumbo. It's the first step to crack the autocratic tactic. I think it's going to be a lot of party time. Party time. With, yeah, you know. But now it's in, cor in uh, COVID time and Corona time. Is it, isn't it irresponsible to have parties? You know, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. People got to relax. People got to have a good time. We got to blow off the steam. You know what they say about the thing with no steam. With no, they don't, uh, they blow it off. If you don't blow it off, it, they're going to blow up. Mm. Stay blind to your weakness, stay deaf to your flaws, never say you're sorry when you make the laws. Follow the leader, he knows the moves, you fall one and all in the autocratic groove tonight. You got to blow off the steam. So I'm not gonna relax, gonna get used to the job. I'm not going to have some party, invite a lot of people. Uh, do bop, do bop, the autocratic tactic. And of course, they wear the mask. He says, we do it safe. Because mm -hmm. like you say, uh, he's a virus. Mm. He's everywhere and it's uh, dangerous and deadly. You know, it almost got the Donald. And uh, so people got to wear the mask. So you But believe in the virus, we, we, uh, Oh, Carly. of course, yeah. Yeah, it's very dangerous. This is why people need to stay at home. They need to stay. They probably should not even uh, vote to begin with. Too, da too dangerous. It, 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 you can do it. You can do it. It does not matter to me. <laughs> you know, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? It doesn't matter to Carlo. <laughs> But, uh, uh, you know, you want to be safe. You want to stay off the streets. Don't talk to, to nobody. Stay in the house. Uh, don't uh, don't uh, look at the news because it's a very upsetting. Uh, you learn a lot about the world. It upsets you, and you should be happy. It's just a step, a spin, the hand, the heaps, the shim, the sham, the slide, the leap, the stomp, the gun, and you're done with the trip. Now you got a plan of attack, the autocratic tactic. Be happy, He's relax in your house, don't go nowhere, don't see nobody, don't ask no questions. So it that. sounds like, like the virus is actually a good thing for you. Yeah, the virus is great. Yeah, I like it. Any time like this, it's a wonderful, it's a great opportunity. This is why I say the Donald, he does not uh, live up. To the potential. You know, this is, it's like, how many times somebody hand you something like this? You know, the economy, it is in shambles. People hate each other. This is, phew, this is nice. This is, these are really good conditions. You know, you got a lot of hatred, you got a lot of fear, You got the uh, problems with the economy. You got the uh, unemployment. Uh, all of these things is very, very bad. So it's wonderful opportunity. I would But like. But what did Trump do? He he, he piece it. He piece it. Hmm. He 
Piss it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, uh, I would like to ask you about your, your cultural policy. <laughs> I would li like to ask you about your cultural policy, actually. Do you like theater? Theater? Uh, you know, it can be nice, but it's uh, sometimes, it's, you know, mm, it, it don't stay where it needs to stay. You know, you go to the theater, you have a laugh. You know, go out with friends, have a dinner, see a show. It's nice. But sometimes these theaters, they, they get too... Mm, they encourage too much thinking. You know, raise too many questions. This, this is the problem. Would you That's where I don't like it. Would you support the theater? Sure, sure, sure. I, I love the theater. I love, I love it. And the theater people, they're so fun, beautiful people, I love them, you know, we have a good time. But you cannot do this uh, sort of um, uh, theater that uh, make people think. Mm. This is where you get the problem. I support them. You do it like this. I give you the money. So we uh, uh, came in touch with you, Carlo, through... Uh, the good people of Touchstone Theatre. Actually, we have one of them with us. He's the one that called you, uh, JP. Do you know him? Yes, yes, yes. He arranged... Uh, I did the, the telethon from a Touchstone Theatre. It's a beautiful place. Welcome your host, the telethon tyrant himself, Generalissimo Carlo Supremo. You, you like this theater? About yes, very you... much. It's, it's uh, you know, the, the people, the nice, everybody friendly, have a good time. Sure. So is there anything you would like to say to, uh, to GP, since he's here with us in the studio? Uh, have any message GP, for him? GP, how are you? You know, I, good. one good. thing, I think... Uh, I leave something in the dressing room. It's maybe a small box in there. If you see it, uh, um, yeah, important yeah. that you give it back to me. Uh, but uh, you don't need to open it. You just uh, keep it and until you give it back to me. Yeah, we flushed it down the toilet. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what's flushed. happening now. He said he flushed it. I don't know it. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe I think you have a good, uh, like a um, plumber company come with a, with a root it. He root the plumbing and he take it. He take it back out. Look at that. Yeah, take I don't know. Out. Somebody, somebody did a real number on that bathroom after we flushed it. I don't know that you want to do that. I think uh, is this a problem? Well, uh, you know, you, it's a personal thing. Okay. I, I I don't gonna talk about it here, but I want to get it back. So, Carlo, uh, what are your values actually? What do you believe in? What kind of a question is this? What do you believe in? What do you believe in? I don't know. I believe in. Um, what do you believe in? What do I believe in? Yeah. Okay, I tell you. Yeah, sure. I believe in the children. You know? It's so important. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. You got to believe. I believe the children, you know, we win only when you play along. Dummy, give us power, and what could go wrong? Dummy, give it up, live it up. The time is now. Close your eyes, it's no surprise. That's the way we get to power. They're like a nice, like a, like a plant. You give them water in the sunlight. We're gonna make the magic happen for a lot of kids tonight. Kids that want to grow. 
is nice. And you, you dream here, you dream there. Maybe you take the, the, the stem and you tie it you know, to the ground and then it, it curve over and it touch the ground. Um, it's, it's nice, I like a, it's a, I like the kids. Me. We win only when you play along. You know, I do it. I do it all for them, and I believe. I believe in them. What is your actually? There's a German word, Menschenbild. What is your Menschenbild? <gasps> What is your conception of the human being? Is the human being uh, is 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 the human being free, or is uh, is he determined, or no. is? Uh, Does he does does the human being have to be led towards something? Is is he good or bad? You like it, you like it to paint it all with a with a big brush, like oh all the people they are like this. For me, I don't see it like that. Mm. For me, I say there are a couple of different kind of people. You know, there's the person who rise up to be a leader, make the world beautiful, make people safe, protect them, like this. And then there got another people who are like a, mm, and they're maybe a small, small person, people. You know, they're like, uh, they're like, they need to, they need to, they to follow. A strong leader, you know, they're like a, mm, they're like a nice people, but they're like a little person, you know. And you take them and you you put them in the the nicer place, and you say, "This is for you. It's a beautiful." And there's another type of person um, who are like the people uh, who keep a uh, keep a uh, everybody safe. He's uh, like the shepherd, mm -hmm. you know. He take care of the flock. He's like a like a, your Jesus, you know. It's the same, the shepherd and the flock, you know. It's like a that. They need to keep them safe, protect, feed, you know, brush them, maybe shave them, take the wool, take their wool, the wool. Yeah, yeah. You make you take the wool, the meat. You take the meat, yeah, sure. You meat every day, like I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The wool, the meat, maybe the hmm, all sorts of good parts, the horns, the hmm. you use them. So you can you really you know if you're lonely you take the sheep and you. But it's like, <laughs> I don't do it, but it's possible. Of I course, think. of course, you you don't need a sheep to do it. Do you have a? <laughs> are you married, Carlo? Ah, uh, you know, yeah, of course, of of course, uh, there's a. Uh, There's always the, 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 you know, there's the woman behind the man, of course, it's just like this. A beautiful uh, woman who help uh, keep uh, on the straight path, like that, you know, be the, mm, like the, the, the guide for mm, keep on straight path and maybe... You know, you go over the path and she, you know, it's like a strong, mm, you need a woman to keep strong, like, but gentle sort of guiding, you know, whack, you know, keep it like that. You like the whack? No, I like the gentle, you know, but just a little bit, you know, just like tick, tock. It's a spicy, a bit spicy. It's a tick, it's a tick, tick, you know, just a tweak. Just at the tip. <laughs> to correct you, to keep you straight, uh, on the straight path. On the path, you know. So we want, we don't want to you to, to steal so much of your time, Carlo, because you're, of course, a busy man. But uh, I want to give you the chance to have uh, the last word. And then maybe we can also get Christopher back. I don't know where he went. But... Uh, so maybe as as this is we are some days into the election so maybe take one minute and and give your give us a a take on on why the people should vote you and what are you, what is yeah 
sure, yeah. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, you know. I got to thank all the good people at the Weather Room, you know, doing a really hard work and a uh, good job. Beautiful people. Thank you so much. You know, I say it like this. Uh, uh, I see the people. I see you. Let me speak directly to you, the people. I see you. I see you. Wherever you are, I see you. I see what you're doing right now. Do you see me? No, you don't see me. You cannot see me, but I am here. And I watch everything you do. So I'd say like this. I say, um, you want... You, I can tell you want a, someone strong. You want a, some leader who's gonna, you know, make a lot of strong decisions. Because you, you think you see this in your Donald Trump. And you think you're gonna get this leader who's gonna be, like, your real hero. But I gotta tell you, you know, I've seen this guy. And he's not gonna do it for you. If you want somebody like this... You know, if you want a strong guy, you know, because I see you want it, then you pick me, you pick a Carlo, because I am the actual, real deal dictator. You know, I'm not just trying to hide something like, uh, oh no, I'm uh, just a nice uh, 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 political, uh, oh, I'm the president, oh, I'm a businessman. No, I'm a dictator. This is my thing. It's a one thing. Dictator. I know you want it. But you play, you play like, uh, you tease it, you tease it. Oh, I don't want it. Oh, you want it. I know you do it. I give it to you. I'm not going to give it to you, whether you like it or not. And I think you're going to like it. So maybe we leave it like that. Okay, so... Well, see you maybe then, or you see me, as you said before. Yeah, you're gonna see me in your dreams. Maybe. So, ciao, Carlo. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao Carlo. GP. Ciao, ciao. Oh. Wow. Holy shit. So, is... Uh, Holy shit's right. I think Christopher's been in the bathroom this whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's so... <laughs> Hey guys, what did I miss? <laughs> uh, you, you kind of something, really. I'm actually I only have a, one last question for you. Uh, how can we how can we prevent Carlo? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Forget everything you learned in school, dummy. Ready, set, and go. Now be a fool. Dummy, it's better than the golden rule, better than the things you learned in school. We win only when you play along. Um, but I would say, you know, the one of the big problems that we that we have right now is that we're not recognizing the the tried and true tactics that uh, dictators employ when they are in the process of consolidating power. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, you know, it's all obvious. You know, we, we see it o play out over and over again. And, um, and we're seeing it now around the world. And we need to recognize it for what it is and say we're not going to let that stand in, you know, wherever we are, whether it's here in America or someplace else. Um, I think the important thing is to identify it, understand that it's dangerous, understand that it's a, it's a point on a trajectory toward a very bad and dangerous place. Mm. Um, and, and, change course we need some more optimistic note to end <laughs> on that <laughs> i mean jp said that you're convinced that that we will not have uh, 
yeah that uh, Biden will win so I hope there's also I hear also from some people that um, yeah so I, I hope so I hope that it will not be Trump but we will that will not be the end of the story I also know that I mean un unfortunately um, you know people like Carlo uh, don't play by the rules you know and um, so the question is, what do you do if somebody stops playing by the rules, right? If somebody says, um, you know, these are the new rules, I just made them. These are now the rules of the game. And by these rules, I win, right? What do you, what do, you do in the situation where your opponent does that? Yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell what, uh, what happened. I think the thing is so, what you hope for is that the, that the people around them continue to play by the rules. This idea of Trump not leaving office or not honoring the election results, once those election results are, are official, he's not going to have a, a choice. If everything's, go, you know, people aren't, the people are all sworn to protect the Constitution, what we're doing. And our military is based on that. And so while the military has been somewhat quiet on it, if somebody tries to stay in the White House of America past when they're supposed to leave, they'll be escorted out by the generals, and that's just what'll happen. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not concerned that he will actually try to stay in office. Um, I'm concerned about the the response of the people who don't want to see him go. Yeah, it was interesting. He said something on TV. Uh, maybe this is about almost two weeks ago or something. And he was going on about, he'd be like, well, what am I going to do if I get defeated by Joe Biden, the worst political candidate of all time? Mm -hmm. He's like, I might just have to leave this country. <laughs> it's like, that would be the best thing that could possibly happen. You just go. Also, like, there's so many lawsuits that are potentially coming that guy's way as soon as he gets exactly. out of here. And, well, and his like, immunity is gone. Yeah, it'll be really great. You know, who knows what's coming next. <laughs> you know, but... I, I, I can tell you this. Um, you know, it's rare to have an artist want uh, their work to become irrelevant. But man, I'd love to see that. Mm. You know? I'd love, I'd love to see a time when it's like, oh, wow, look at all that great work you did on... Political resistance. Yeah, that'll never get seen again. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay, so that was for this show of The White Room. And uh, I thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting also that we had the chance to speak to Carlo. Mariah, you breathe. You want to say something? Yeah. Ah, no. <laughs> Simon! Oh, oh my God, it's like we've been married for 15 years. Uh, she's I like, actually she's like, to say something. She's like... <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I wanted to thank JP for bringing a smile to our faces with your happy predictions at the end when I thought that was really lost, lost on us <laughs> for now. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us. It's yeah. always uh it's always nice. I can't wait till we get to see you guys in person again someday. And maybe we can see each other after the third of November. Sure. For the last part of this trilogy. Ah yeah, why not? Of the first trilogy. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yeah, why not? Let's see about that. Let's see about that. Uh see, how is it let's with see how you the guys? world looks. With huh? Yeah, how how is it with you guys? With like, how are things in Germany? How, what do, what do people think about the the comedy of errors that's happening here in America? <laughs> We're frightened and frustrated. Some people are saying the whole world should be able to vote the U.S. elections <laughs> because we're all so affected by the results. But there's a lot of uh, people are very insecure about it. We we can't really just a uh, judge from here how how and what is uh, what is happening yeah i think we're uh, we are very aware that it's uh, 
it's almost uh, uh, Hillary Trump also you know it's both both possibilities are not like really not really really good but it's Hillary it, Trump yeah like this Hillary Trump situation 2016 you know uh, uh -huh. Biden is also not the uh, ideal candidate that I would imagine but uh, in the last uh, months of course it's the it's it's the only way to to mm. <laughs> to get out of this uh, somehow um, also moral misery somehow i mean it's not mm. maybe i don't really know on the policy levels that anything would change actually for the for the for the policy regarding like foreign policy no trump has been for me trump has been like the the in the, in the first when he when he came to power i was actually uh, interested very much because he was a kind as we said before he was a kind of uh, for, very strange candidate outside of the normal he he was like very very um, very honest <laughs> in, in his in, in the bad way no like like bragging about the mother of all bombs and everything like that no but actually the 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 policies like uh, 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 bringing in like drone strikes and everything like that it's it's did not change i mean it was before it was also uh, like that obama had a lot of uh, has a lot of deaths on his <laughs> on his mm -hmm. um, count so i found it interesting that he like was uh, the personification of this also let's say this <laughs> maybe this old term imperialistic side of the united states <laughs> for the not end. really though he was actually quite the opposite mm -hmm. i feel yeah, than but imperialistic yeah uh, but uh, and some many people here think that that actually if the democrat would have won mm -hmm. that the situation in the middle east might have been very different yeah course. yeah 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 of course so it's it's i think there's this we fall into this problem and maybe it's no not no solution of Trump's, but you know when we talk about the him versus the other guy or whatever, it's just like mm. it's not that good things haven't happened under him. Like you know what I mean, or potentially good things like might mm -hmm. have happened. But it's like to say that everything's been horrible. Like it's it's just not. I don't know. For myself, looking at the world, it's just like oh, there's been a lot, and maybe it's been more more bad than good. But that, you know, some of the decisions that have been made along the way or have not been bad things. Like internally, he's uh, he's helped Veterans Affairs off in a, in a good way here in our country, bringing, you know, uh, money to families of veterans who have been affected by, um, you know, sickness and stuff like that. And so that's a that's a neat thing. Right. But um, but when you wrap it up in the whole picture, it just seems like another way of man he's manipulating the system. Mm. You know, it is what it is. And the smiles are gone. We 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 should no, have. No, it's all good. <laughs> the problem. I'll tell you what. Don't don't let the smiles be gone. It's a it, it, the, the 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 problem is much bigger. Like, like yeah, yeah. it's the whole system is fucked. Like the whole system is incredibly fucked. The, the idea that like where America believes that people are either a Democrat or a Republican denies anybody any kind of three dimensionality. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. if you don't have some so opinions true. that are very uh, are to the right and what they consider left, like politics and the human being are a three dimensional space, and the stuff we believe in cannot be set to the and and the, the, what the horrible things come is when it becomes this radicalization of saying like I'm going to believe everything that this person over here says or I'm going to believe everything this person over here says and because you could come and entrench on the positions are just bad and we don't take and, and it's like no no one is 100% right no place mm -hmm. is 100% right and mm -hmm. the, and if we can't have those conversations so the problem is one that is uh, a whole paradigm Ingrained. shift needs to happen in America yeah. Yeah. To, to, to break that and yeah. understand that and we don't need a third party candidate. We need a fourth party candidate and a fifth party candidate. We need more than just, we need a lot mm -hmm. more than two fucking candidates out there right now. And I don't know that America is ever going to learn that lesson, but until we do, like, it's going to be the same shit. Like we say here, between the Democrats and the Republicans, the, the pendulum is going to swing. And that's the thing. It's like these people over here, all right, it's just going to come back that way. It doesn't, you know what I mean? That the problem mm -hmm. is ongoing. It's ongoing as time itself, you know, in this way. It's just the pendulum thing. So the the, the situation is, you know, 
I think no one's uh, even talking. No one's even talking about a solution of a systemic change, no. which it really exactly. needs. Exactly. I think. I think all, also here. I mean, here. Um, but in general, we are all just tired of this. Of of this. Of this crazy yeah, uh, shit show, let's say, and we want to have some, even if it's even if it's just Biden, but he runs also as a candidate who's just not a not such a big problem let's say no <laughs> he just he runs on that that he's okay somehow so he's not he and i'm I think really he is i'm okay really I'm, somehow actually yeah, yeah yeah but he i'm looking forward to not seeing uh, trump on yeah. the television or in everywhere and on twitter or maybe on so um maybe he gets his tv show somewhere and okay that's fine but um, we are very tired of this uh, of this constant um uh gun like not like machine gun of uh, of 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 opinion of of i th i think most of us are too there was another the headline spirits. the other day yeah there was a headline the other day is that america wants a more boring president yeah. that's why joe's winning <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it was fun Hello, Biden. it was fun in some moment i i have to say it was also fun in some moment to see in the 2015 like uh, process it was somehow he was entertaining uh trump but uh, it's yeah it's just <laughs> we, want, right. we want more but it's not, I, it's want, not just I, I will quote i will quote uh, an old friend of mine an italian theater uh, uh director who, who said on some moment i don't want a life full of theater i want a, a lively theater so I say now also, I just want a boring life. I want m to make great art, nice things, but I want to have a very boring life with <laughs> with a <the> boring <laughs> president and with some, like, you know, neighbors yeah. and uh, my so child and <laughs> and so a can, little bit more of this boring life, I think we can we can I can have. respond from <laughs> my half of my ancestors from China who would, if you they did not like you, they would wish you to live in interesting times because yeah. <laughs> these would usually spell out not such happy lives mm. yeah so to you listeners of the white room i we now say goodbye and uh, we hope that you enjoyed this this episode we enjoyed it very much and um, we hope uh, the best for the elections and <laughs> And uh, you can support the podcast by listening to it and subscribing to it. You can also send us money, but you can also send us comments. I want to stress that that uh, you can you can send us comments via email or uh, Facebook or wherever. Every information is on our website. We are we are in this process of creating this yeah this archive or this living book as we once called it of theater practices uh, and theater practitioners who speak about their practice uh, with us and um, yeah it's 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 piling up and it's more material uh, we have more material more and more and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to more very nice conversations yeah <laughs> great me too thank you so much Christopher and jp for being with us absolutely it's a pleasure to guys. be here simon mariah yeah. Okay. Shall we say, see you on the other side? See you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Okay. Good yeah. night. Good night. See you soon. And good luck. Ciao, ciao. Good night. Ciao. Ciao. They win only when you play along. Dummy. Give them power and it all goes wrong. Dummy. Live it up. Don't give it up. The time is now. If you close your eyes, it's no surprise. That's the way they get to power. Remember everything you learned in school, dummy. Ready, sit, and go. Don't be a fool, dummy. It's better than the golden rule, dummy. They win only when we play along. Don't settle in, gotta meddle in. Affairs of state. Make tyranny fall apart We're gonna share a basic rule of thumb Dummy They hammer you till you succumb Dummy But if we see the signs and 